The Samsung S20 series. Is it any good? Well, today I've got two of them here, the Plus and the normal S20. We're gonna see which one is better for what price, and then also if you like this content, make sure to subscribe and also hit that like button. Let's get at least just 100 likes. Both these devices comes in with the in-display fingerprint sensor. Speaking of fingerprints, these phones are very effective in taking your fingerprints and then leaving it at the back. Performance. When it comes down to performance, these phones have the exact same CPU, GPU and RAM. Meaning that the performance should be equal. Well, it's not. Uh, I saw when I did a speed test that the P20 actually conquered it with like a few seconds. Camera. When it comes down to these cameras, the S20 Plus has a depth vision lens, whereby the S20 doesn't. Luckily, the front and back facing cameras have the exact same megapixels. Front facing camera. Look at this. It's focusing out the background, focusing in on me. The S20 Plus, really, really nice uh, video photography on the front facing selfie. Really stable as well. I love it. Um, hopefully the mic quality is good as well. Okay, so as we can see on the S20, it still focuses on me, the front object, and still takes out the back. Uh, but, I mean, it's still stable. It still looks beautiful. The back cameras of these phones are just absolutely phenomenal. Recording in 1080p feels like a dream. It's so smooth. But when it comes down to 8K footage, it feels stuttery. It feels as if 1080p is actually better. Did you even recognize which clip was 8K? Disclaimer, Hanks forgot to record in 4K. So, was it number one? Or number two? And if you guys wanted to see a comparison of just taking single pictures, here's a few I got while just chilling in the garden. Probably one of the best features about this phone is the fact that the display is just absolutely beautiful. When comparing the 120Hz versus the 60Hz, you won't really see a difference when it comes down to scrolling through your home screen. But when it comes down to scrolling through apps, pictures, you can really, really see the difference. And please, don't even worry about the screen, as it comes with the Gorilla Glass 6 screen protector that's currently the strongest screen protector in the market. Colors Samsung really did a great job when it comes to their colors. My only wish though was to have the cloud pink and the cloud white to represent to you guys. So rather, here is. This is currently the cloud blue and this is the cosmic grey. I love the colours but unfortunately the, the cosmic grey, you can see the fingerprints very very easily uh, compared to the cloud blue. You won't see it at all. The pros and cons and my final thoughts. When comparing the pros against each other, you would see that the S20 is cheaper and has the exact same specs, which is a huge benefit. But when you as a user use your phone for hours upon days, I would prefer to go for the S20 Plus as it has a bigger battery. Who cares? Having fast charging on your side really just makes it easier to use your phone daily. And the camera. Wow, 
just absolutely amazing. Buying this phone would definitely assure you of having good quality photo or cinematic photography, even if you put it on the front facing camera. When looking at a $650 phone, you wouldn't expect to find any cons and I didn't. I really didn't see any problem with this phone except the price tag. So Hanks, is it worth buying the S20? No. There's so many substitute phones on this market that would fit the specs. So personally, I would buy the Samsung A71. Looking at the specs and the price, I would believe this is an awesome substitute for the Samsung S20. But hey, if you guys enjoyed this content, remember to smash the like button and I'll see you guys in the next one.